before we get started on today's video, I would like to say thank you to all my patrons. I wouldn't be able to keep the channel live and keep making these videos if it wasn't for you guys. So your support means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. So in this video, we're going to make sure that we can select our quest and maybe show a description over here. So right now we can play our game and it will accept two quests by default. So we have the debugging quest and the testing something quest. So what I would like to be able to do is to select one of these quests so that we can see the description of the quest over here. Step one is to be able to select them. So we need to go to our prefabs somewhere there and find the quest. And right there we can add a new uh, component called the button. So we need to make sure that it is a button component so that we can click on them. And there's also an on click function. Remember that the quest itself has the quest script on it. So we actually need to make that click function here. So let's make a public function called select. So the select function will um, be called whenever we select it or when we click on it. And we might as well already go out here and make sure that if we find the prefab, again, oh, we have it already, we click the plus here and make sure that it takes its own um, quest script select function right there. So now the select function should be called when we click on something, we can test if it works by making debug.log here, called uh, that right selected. And you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but this is just for testing. So now when I save that and did all those things, should write selected as you can see when I click on these. And you can also see you can mouse over them or click them. You can see they're clicked. We need to make sure that we can see which one we have selected. The easiest way to do that is simply go to say get component text to get the text. And we need to use the Unity UI. And then just say text dot color. Oh, what's it called? Um, should be dot column. Yeah, and dot uh, color dot red for example. So now when we select something, remove the debugging, it is red. You can put yellow or whatever color you want. Now I'm just going to use red because it's easy to see. So when I select something. It turns red. However, if I click this one, they're both red. So we also need a deselect function. So below here, we can make a function called deselect. And I spelled that wrong. And yeah, what else? We need to do the same as we do up here. Just set the color to white instead. There we go. Okay, so we need to call this somewhere. Um, yeah, where do we need to call it? Well, actually, we need to call it from inside the, um, the quest log script. So let's see here. Let's just close all but this and just reopen the quest script real quick. Uh, there. So from the quest log script, we will have to do something. We have to show the description, right? So let's make a new function called show description. Whoa right there. So show description will show a description from a quest. Um, right now it doesn't really um, take in anything, but we need to make sure that it takes in a quest because it needs to show a description of a specific quest. How do you get that quest? Well, from the quest script, we have to make sure when we select something, let's say selecting is clicking on a, a quest, it needs to show the description right away. So from here, we will have to take the quest log and we have to make sure that we can select it or to get the selected quest. Um, so what do we do? I think we need to make the quest log um, so that we can access it from everywhere. Let's make a singleton out of it. Let's make sure that it's static. And then we are going to do like this. As we've done lots of times before. My instance return. So if instance is null. Wow. There we go. So if the instance is null, then we say that our instance 
game object find object of type quest log because we only have one quest log so it's okay to do this and we don't need to write game object apparently so we can just write find object of type okay with this in place we go back here and we say quest log dot my instance dot what was it show description right okay show description wants a quest however we don't have a quest here we we don't have a quest to pass on to show description so we need to create it, which means whenever we take a quest and instantiate our quest in the game world, so we can see it in our quest log, we need to make sure that that quest we created is passed onto the quest script. So we're going to make a property of type quest, my quest. So each quest script has a reference to the quest that it is, um, it is controlling kind of, right? So let's see, what are we doing with this? Well, inside um, inside quest log, we are accepting a quest somewhere. We do that here. Well, right here, we need to make sure that we set the actual quest. So we say quest script qs is equal to view.get component quest script. So that's the quest script. When we've done that, we can, uh, and what we're doing here is we are instantiating the quest in the game world, and then we take the quest script from that and create a reference. So we can say qs dot my quest is equal to quest. Because when we accept the quest, the quest giver gives us a quest, we can take that quest and assign it to the quest script. So the quest script has a reference to the original quest now. That's a lot of quest. But when we have done that, my quest is now assigned, which means I can go down here and say my quest. So we don't get a null reference exactly because we are making sure that it is set right here. So that's one thing. And other thing we have to do is to make sure we can select and deselect, right? That was the first thing we wanted to do. We want to make sure we can click them and make them red, but we only need to have one quest selected at a time. So we can go up here and we can make a new uh, selected quest. So it's a quest selected. Let's just make it private. And then we can go down here inside show description and say if selected isn't null. So if selected isn't null, then we say selected dot my quest script so we need to make sure that selected also has a reference to the quest script so actually what we need to do is to make sure that the quest script has a reference to the quest as it has here but the quest also need a reference to the quest script if we need to reference something the other way around so we actually also need to go to the quest script and make a property here called quest script my quest script so they have a reference back and forth both of them know about each other and where do we do that we do it inside the quest log again right here so we have the quest script and we can actually say qs dot uh, my quest dot my quest script equal to qs okay so this is a little confusing right we created a quest script or we, we added it, we actually created it up here and we get the component from it. Then we make sure the quest script has a reference to the quest we are putting in up here. Then we make sure that the quest we're putting in up here has a reference to the quest script. So basically we could also, to make it simpler, write quest dot my quest script equals QS just to make it simpler so we can remove this. This might make more sense. So we take the quest, we make sure the quest has a reference to the quest script, we make sure the quest script has a reference to the quest. Right here, so if you can see these are the opposite of each other, right? With this done, we can go back to where we were, right here in the, wait, that was a quest log, sorry, in the show description. Because inside the show description, we made sure that if we don't have anything selected, well, then we say, uh, or sorry, if we have something selected already, then we say selected dot 
my quest script dot deselect. So if we have something selected when we try to show the description, well then we deselect something. When that's done, we say selected dot equals to quest then. Then we assign it. Let's try to see what happens. So with this in place we can save and we should be able to go back out there and select one quest and then select the other. And there we go. So now we can jump between these two by selecting them. The next thing we have to do is to show something in the right side here where it's written hello world right now. Um, if you don't like how that looks you can simply just go in there and delete the text. Let's see here. Uh, description. Text area. Text. Just delete that. We just needed that for testing it earlier. So now this is gone and we can go to the script. So we need to set a description and stuff. And that description should come from the quest. So let's see here. We have a title and that's it. Um, so let's just go with the title for now. And then in the next video we can start adding objectives and everything. So we have the title. And if we go to the quest lock, we should be able to set that title and use it, f use it for something, right? So let's make a string called title. And it's equal to quest.myTitle. So now we have the title out. Could use this directly, but I would like to make uh, variables for everything because we're going to make a string format and show it. Um, so we need to make a um, quest description. And we can do that up here. Let's see here. I guess this description, let's see here. Private text um, quest description. And it needs to have reference to the text out there. Oops, let's just serialize the field. And if we go out here, just so we don't forget to do it, we can take the quest log. And see, we have the quest description here. And it needs to take the description text area. Oops, not text area. Where is it? Text there. So we take the quest log and put it there. The text from the text uh, from the description, so that we can change it. And then we go all the way down here. And yeah, for now let's write quest description dot text is equal to string dot format. need to put something in here so if I would put hello world here and save it right whenever I click on any of these quests it write hello world out there okay. but we need to get the title of the quest first of all we need the title of the quest in the top so what we're going to do is to write zero here because index zero and we are going to write the title in there to punch it in there again you can write title or you could take this and copy and paste it right there and delete this line it's up to you what you want to do i just want them in variables so now we have the title so when i play the game now <coughs> come on there you can see oh i have selected the debugging quest or i have selecting the testing something quest now we get the title out there and you see where this is going. We need to put in description, title, objectives of the quest. And if you want this to be um, bold, do it like this. Put this around so this one goes into the zero. And then you just use the formatting here to make it change colors and all that. Exactly like we did with the tooltip. So now it should be bold. Let's see if we can see the difference. Oh, wait forgot to put the tag in there it used to be a start and end tag which I'll save and we also need to make sure it's rich text but it should be ah, so now you can see it's a bold font I, I don't think it looks very good um, did I use to change the font yes I did okay anyway you can make it bold if you want to or you can avoid if you don't want to 
um, I guess that's what I want to do in this video, being able to select the quests and being able to see out here what quest we have selected. So that's the one of the first steps and next video we'll start adding um, objectives maybe and the description to the quest. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.